Hi everyone, welcome to Art Break Live. I'm Susie Wolf and I work in the Education Department at the Baltimore Museum of Art. And today we are going to look at landscapes, which are works of art that incorporate elements from nature, such as mountains and trees and waterfalls. And we're going to be looking at two huge paintings together and then an equally large photograph. And what we are going to do is to look at the ways that artists try to trick us and fool our eyes into thinking that their flat works of art can that have a lot of space and depth and that we could enter them. And so what we're going to do is to pretend that we can walk into the paintings and explore them using our senses of sight, sound, and touch. And as always, if you have questions, go ahead and type them below, and I'll take a look at them when we get to the live portion of our program. So the first landscape painting that we are going to look at together is by an artist named William Picknell. It was painted in 1881, and it's called Winter Day in Brittany. And Brittany is in northwestern France, um, and its landscape looks something like this photo that was taken in Brittany. So let's press the magic button and pretend that we can go into the painting. And the first thing we're going to do is figure out what is our point of view? Where are we in this painting? Take a look. So it looks to me as if we are either standing on the road or we are beside the road in the green path that goes along beside it. And the artist titled this Winter's Day. So if we can use our senses, what might it feel like to be in the painting? We can see that some of the bushes along the sides have turned brown, so they're dead because of the cold. And the sky is a silvery gray, um, kind of somber looking sky as if it's very chilly. So I think we'd sort of be shivering if we were in it. And take a look at that sky again. It looks very rough, and the reason is that the artist used a palette, which would have paint on it, and a palette knife instead of a brush. So this palette knife puts on a very rough touch to the painting that's there and makes those clouds look sort of breezy, as if um, they're slightly blowing around. Now, if we could use our ears and sort of think about what we might hear in the painting, I can think of two things. One might be the sound of the horse walking away from us, or it may be a slight wind that is bringing these clouds um, in for a storm. So let's look at the way the artist tries to fool our eye into thinking that we could walk back into this painting and he uses two techniques. And the first is that if you look at the road, you can see that it starts out very wide, doesn't it? And as we look back, the two sides get closer and closer. So it seems as if we're looking at that end of the road in a distance, as if the horse and rider have a long way to go. And there's one more way that the artist makes us think that there's a lot of space in this painting. So let's look at the trees on this left side. And you can see that the trees right near us are very tall. And as we go back, it looks as if the trees are smaller, which means that our eye thinks they're farther away going back into space. And Picknell fools our eye in two other ways to make us think that this scene, this landscape scene is vast. And he does that by creating, by painting the man and the horse very small in scale related to the rest of the landscape. So they look small and in comparison, everything around them looks big. And you see how big that sky is? It takes up about three quarters of the painting, and there's just a little bit of land down below. So with all that sky, it makes the sky seem vast, as if we have a huge vista in front of us. Well, this painting 
is very different from the next painting that we are going to look at by an artist named Jasper Cropsey, who painted this painting called Janetta Falls. So let's press our magic button again and pretend that we can enter the painting. So where are we standing? Take a minute and look. Now, do you see that we are right by Janetta Falls, uh, standing right there on some rocks? And I wonder what it would sound like to be there and also feel like to be in the scene. If you think about it, we are right by those falls. So I'm sure we would hear the water cascading over the rocks. And I bet we would feel some mist maybe coming off that water, as well as some dampness just from being in the woods. And if we look up that mountain, you could almost miss seeing the small artist sitting there who is sketching. And remember, this is a trick that artists use to make a landscape surrounding a little small figure seem very vast. So we see a little figure and the tree beside him looks huge in scale related to the little figure. And if we look up even higher, up into the landscape, we'll see that the trees as we look up get smaller and smaller and the rocks get smaller as well. So it seems as if that distance is far away from us. Now, the artist, Cropsey, did one really interesting thing to lead our eye right up that mountain. And the, th the thing that he did was, instead of having a canvas that's horizontal, meaning that in this direction, if this is our longest direction, he actually turned the canvas this way, long way, standing up. So it looks very narrow, and so our eye is taken directly up that landscape. So let's take a look at the final landscape that we'll talk about today. Um, it is actually a photograph and it measures about five feet by nine feet. So it is huge. And what I'd love for us to do is to press our magic button one last time and enter this landscape. Where would we be? So take a look for a second. So it looks to me as if we would be either sitting or kneeling right in front of three large pine trees. And I wonder what we would feel if we could sit there. Now we know that the artist, Baby and You, loved to photograph this same area repeatedly, and he loved to do it in early morning. So we know it's morning time, so we may feel a little bit of a chill or even feel a little bit of this mist on us that we can see in the photograph. And because these twisting trees are pine trees, we may smell a little bit of pine in the air. So how does the artist uh, create depth in his photograph? That's done because the trees, as he shoots the photograph, give the sense of getting smaller and narrower going back in space. And we see something that's called atmospheric perspective. And that means that the atmosphere, the, the weather around us, affects what we see in a landscape. So do you see that it's very misty? And as this mist, as we look into the mist, it makes the trees seem less and less clear until they almost seem to disappear in the background. Now, this photograph was taken in a place called Gunjo in South Korea. And because of the climate of the place, the wind blows from different directions. And over time, it causes these pine trees to almost curlicue. Um, which makes them seem sort of magical in a way. And in fact, this landscape is actually a sacred space. It is a place where um, there are royal mounded tombs from emperors that date back to about 1400. And since we're still in this photograph, if we walk together into the landscape, 
um, down and to the right, we're going to see just a little bit of a fence that looks like the one in this um, photograph that is used to surround part of the sacred pine forest. All right, so together we have had a chance to see the ways in which artists trick our eyes to make us think we are on a road on a cold winter's day under a bright open sky, or that we're wrapped up in a forest near um, a waterfall, or that we're in a sacred pine uh, forest. And this is what I want to know. We're getting ready to go live, and I'll see you in a moment. What I want to know is where is your favorite place um, to be outside? What is your favorite landscape? So I can't wait to find out, and I'll be with you in just a moment. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for this Art Break Live on Landscapes. I thought I'd show you a couple things. And the first thing I wanna get back to is the use of a palette. Um, palettes are often made of wood or some sort of hard surface. And in this one, I don't know if you can see, but it's been cut, this hole has been cut, so that my finger would fit perfectly in there. And I could put paints on and if, if we look at the Picknell painting, The Winter in Brittany, all right, um, we're gonna look again in at the sky in the upper right um, that was applied with the use of a palette knife. So as you can see, um, on the back of this palette knife is where the paint would be scraped off um, the palette. And if we were, if I were right on top of this um, uh, painting, those marks that are going down that way, <laughs> the marks that are going down that way um, are made with uh, a palette knife and are really, uh, really uh, rough and sort of coarse. So you get this beautiful texture on the on the um, on the surface of the canvas. Um, this was in oil paint, so oil paint takes a little bit of time to dry. And you can see there those um, kind of very um, uh, rough um, marks on the canvas with the sort of the white and the gray um, below the blue. So that's very different from the Cropsey painting, um, Janetta Falls. We can look at that in a second. And this painting too would um, have um, been painted in oil, but not with a, um, with a palette knife, with a, this way, <laughs> with a brush, um, that was much finer. So if we go in and see maybe as close as we can to a detail of the, um, the painting, um, you can see the brush stroke there. And you can see that it makes a much finer, um, much finer um, sort of stroke to the painting and you can get much more detail in it rather than just broad strokes. All right, so there are <clears throat> three things that um, I want to talk to you about in terms of teaching children about perspective. And there's one way um, to do it in terms of overlapping shapes. So with, with an overlap, and I just did this in, um, in Magic Marker, but you certainly could do it with, with um, construction paper with children. When we overlap something, so the white is put on first, followed by the green. When we do that, it gives the appearance of this tree being farther in front of the other tree, sort of creating a, a perspective there. And the other one I wanna show you is sort of a size comparison that you can do with small children. By having them draw um, an object, so in this case, a tree again, in three different sizes, and our eye is tricked, again, to think that the larger of the three trees is in front of us and that the other two go back in space, even though they're drawn on a, um, on a flat piece of paper. And there's a really fabulous um, website um, that I'm hoping my colleague uh, Veronica will, will put up. It's, it's a website that show, it's for a website for children that um, demonstrates in photos um, and in drawing step-by-step step, how to create a landscape using perspective, if you'd like to use that with your children or with your students. 
So my big question to you was, what is your favorite landscape? Um, where do you like to be outside? And let's see. Um, so has anyone, we'll wait for that. Think about that and tell me your favorite, um, your favorite place to be outside. And um, Sarah, you've asked a couple questions. So the paintings were just as big as the photographs. So the, um, the Picnell wide landscape of the winter's day in Brittany is probably about six feet by four feet. Yeah, it is, it is enormous. And so when the galleries reopen and you can be standing in front of it, if you stand um, sort of up close to it, it feels like it completely surrounds you and that you're in that landscape. And in the same gallery, actually, is the Cropsey painting. Um, and that is equally large, but of course made vertically. So your eye, uh, and it's positioned so that you're slightly lower to the painting. And so that your eye goes straight up that side of the mountain and see, it seems very, very steep. Um, let's see. So Mamuda's favorite place to be is in the mountains. Fantastic. And I'm wondering if there is a particular state or in Maryland or in a foreign country that you like to be in the mountains. I can say that my favorite place is to be at the beach. Um, in Delaware. That's that's my favorite place to be. And I also like hiking in the woods in West Virginia. All right. Let's see. Anything else? Sarah thought it was interesting that the person, the the artist in who was sketching in the Japs or Jap, in Janetta Falls, New Jersey, the Jasper Cropsey painting is facing away from the waterfall and is and is um, and is sketching the um, the woods. I don't really know the answer to that, other than it would have taken a while to get to this place, and I'm sure that um, the the sketcher is going to spend a little bit of time there. So maybe he is sketching what's in front of him now, and will turn and uh, and paint that water. Um, all right. Sarah loves to look at the woods, um, uh, looking out at the James River in, in, in Richmond. Yeah, I think, um, I think, um, water is often people's, water and mountains are people's, um, favorites rather than, you know, a, a flat field, but I could be wrong. So Connecticut. All right. Mamuda, is there, um, are there specific mountains in Connecticut that you like? I don't want to push you on it, but I would love to know just for my sake, um, if you like to hike or do you paint there or draw there or just um, just sit and look at the mountains. Anyway, I'll wait for a second and find out. We'll, we'll give it just a second. Now, this baby and you um, photograph is outstanding. It is not on exhibition now, but when it comes back, it again is, I think I said four by six feet. And um, those trees uh, in it, in comparison to my body, the large three trees in front of us um, are as, just about as wide as I am. So you feel as if you were right there in that scene. But it's hard to see um, unless you go back to this Art Break Live video and maybe stop the video for a minute when you get right down to that far um, right corner of the photograph in the very, very distance in the back um, is a is the fence that is in the, the exact same design as um, the one that is par partially surrounding the mound in the photograph uh, in the video. Hi, Tracy. I love that you like walking in Gwyns Falls. Um, I think it's beautiful. Oh, it's nice to see you're nice to see that you're here to watch our break live. Yeah, those trails are lovely. And it's so great that they're in the city. You know, often we think about having to go and be in the woods out in the county or someplace far away. And it's a hot, hop, skip and a jump for most people who live in Baltimore City. Yeah, local locations are great as well. 
All right. Yeah, I was thinking um, um, of one more place. If you live in Baltimore to check out, it's called Stony Run Trail. And it runs um, from Northern Parkway down, um, down to um, 36th Street or below. So it is an, an urban um, uh, trail that goes along a tributary to the Jones Falls. Stony Run is a tributary to the Jones Falls. And then the Jones Falls will go under underground and you continue and it comes back up just like a little friend. It goes away and then you'll see it in a minute. All right, so thank you for joining. Oh, Sarah has one more question. Um, may we see the, the Picknell painting one more time? How does the um, how does Picknell make the road look like it is rising in the distance? All right, um, Andrea, may we please see that in full screen for a minute? Wowie, I'm gonna put on my specs here. Hold on just a second. All right, um, so the lines actually begin closest to us in a diagonal, right? And then as they go back, almost near the back of that horizon line, they begin the, the, the uh, line on the right side along the road. Can you see it begins to curve a little bit? So that curve and the curve on the other side make it seem, create the visual um, effect of um, the, that the road goes up a hill a little bit. If those lines went straight back to the point, um, to, a, to the horizon line, um, it wouldn't look as if it, um, if it is rising in the distance. All right, so take off my specs. Um, thank you very much for joining us. So um, on, we'll see you again in two weeks. On uh, September 3rd, if you haven't had a chance to see it, we are going to um, re-air one of our most um, liked episodes of Heartbreak Live, and that is on uh, about the game of knuckle bones. And then on September the 17th, Tuesday, oh, Thursday, September um, 17th at 2 o'clock, we will have a new Art Break Live program on the Sculpture Gardens at the BMA. And as you may know, the Sculpture Gardens have reopened. Um, so we hope that you'll come in and at a safe distance enjoy the sculptures there. Um, there is also a snow cone stand and a hot dog stand. Um, I'm not quite sure of the hours of those, so I'll type them in, in the comments below. All right, thank you for joining and we'll see you in two weeks.